Hi, my name is Nicole King and it's a pleasure to welcome you back to Marbella now and also to the Exhibition Centre here in the heart of Marbella. So many people drive straight past, have no idea it's even here and yet they have so much to offer. Not only spaces for us to host events but great events that we can come to as well. There's also the Foreigner's Office upstairs which is great because us resident international um, residents can go there and get uh, so much help for things. There's workspace, office space. Anyway, come down because this is a hub of our community and if you haven't been in before, it's worth checking out. I'm delighted to welcome to the program today Mario Bravo, thanks to my dear friend Anita Norje. He's come from Mijas, but of course as member of PP, right, representative of the PP, and mm -hmm. you're a lawyer, work, and needing to come to the TV show, has brought you down to Marbella. Thank you so much for coming back to the program, Mario. It's been a few years since we've caught up on camera. Yes, but it's never too late to be back. It's never too late to be back. I'm loving your new look. So is this a COVID look with the moustache and the beard? Well, it is obviously due to the COVID. You, you probably don't know, but for a man, it is very difficult to waste some time every day to shave, and it hurts. I have a hard face. I know it sounds very wrong in Spanish. But you've got a strong beard. That's right. Yeah. And then I stopped when the government told us that we couldn't go out. Then I decided to stop shaving, and soon it will be one year. Well, it looks very nice and actually it's kind of a fashionable thing right now. We have so many barber salons that have opened up, which is the fashion. Get your beard, then you go there and you get all pampered and so that's nice that's too. That's right. There are many men that have stopped shaving. It is not only because it is uh, better and easier, also, as I said, you save time and uh, you are always ready. Yeah, and your face can have a, 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 a rest. rest. Correct. Which is really nice. It was funny because we we're talking about high heels and mm -hmm. how with age we f go for comfort over the look. Whereas a few years ago we do anything for the look and now is anything just for an easy, comfortable life. Do you think that since COVID yourself and people in your world are beginning to embrace life a bit more and taking a bit away importance to getting things done and work? Correct. If there is something positive and... I think it is uh, our duty to find something positive in this nightmare is the fact that we have gone back to our origins. So we have started to realize that possibly our happiness was not outside with the music, alcohol and the bars or restaurants. Our happiness is possibly inside and not only inside us, also inside our family, our friends, our home. That's why most of the money that before was diverted into bars and restaurants now is invested in improving our home. We it's funny, it really is. I think all of us are taking on a new sense of pride mm -hmm. of how our homes look because we're spending more time there. We want them to be more comfortable, as opposed to, as you say, the more frivolous spending. That's right, and we have realized that our home should not be a hotel, the place where you only go to sleep. It is a place to live, so you should have pleasure and you should have work. There are a lot of properties, for example, that have now connected to the fiber optic. Many of them have created a small gym and also all of them, I think, have found a corner to put a computer and try to work for home. Many companies have had to have their staff obviously working from home. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to be a tendency to maintain that to a large degree? It's cheaper, people seem to be coping very well. And not only that, imagine how many kilometers, how many liters of petrol, how many accidents, how many hours people waste going from home to work and back. All that time which is wasted, there is no profit in it can be safe and can be invested in our own life. I know that the taxi drivers and the bus employees may not like this idea, but possibly there is no need to transport so much. And we have realized of that all of a sudden. Uh, an enormous amount of meetings have now been cancelled and the world keeps running and everything works. And we don't need to see each other presently in the same table. We can see each other uh, through computers, 1,000 kilometers away, and things uh, still work. 
the Spanish are very big on family, contact, the tapa, the aperitivo, mm -hmm. and everything that's involved. But I have to say that I, too, was pleasantly surprised about how um, cercano, how warm, actually, an mm -hmm. internet connection can be. We have more time to talk to the people, because whereas before you meet up, you do your meeting, now you're having a chat, then you talk about work, then you finish having another chat. I've actually got to know mm -hmm. some people better Correct. through talking online than when I saw them frequently face to face. The secret is how you manage your life and your time. If you really use that time for um, FaceTime or Zoom or many other platforms, it is a way to keep in touch with everybody, no matter how far they are. In Spain, we had a, a, some people say a problem. We, could, we call that advantage, the good weather. The good weather makes us go out and meet people. It is easier. If you live in Finland, going out is a problem. So people remain more isolated. There is a joke, you know, when they say that, you, that we need to keep two meters distance one from another. The Finnish complained, asking why so close. We are different. Here we like to be with people, not only in the same table. We also like to, to touch, to kiss, to be together with. Mm, we have lost that physical feeling, but the technology allows us to keep that sensation even through a small screen or a big one. depends the size of your TV at home. From your vantage point, how do you foresee the future of the measures that have been introduced lately, I mean, the tight controls, the hygienic in, um, restrictions, the time restrictions, do you think this is going to carry on for a while, regardless of how the virus progresses? What do you yes, see coming from Some of us? them should remain forever. Uh, the washing our hands before sitting down on a table to have some food is something that we all were taught when we were children, and we have forgotten conveniently. This is something that we have to keep forever for our own benefit. We all are talking now about the COVID-19, but nobody talks about the flu. What has happened with the flu? Nobody has got flu, not only in Spain, in most of Europe. Why? Because we have been washing our hands. We have not kissed each other. We have not been breathing on closed spaces. And uh, uh, of course, the use of masks has been very vital. You know, I, I live in Mijas, where we receive the visit of a lot of Japanese and uh, Korean also. Many of them were wearing masks many years ago, and we all thought they Michael were... Michael Jackson, how we laughed at him. That's right. <laughs> we all thought they perhaps they were ill. No, it was the opposite. They didn't want to be ill. They didn't want to get a virus, and this is something we have learned. So perhaps we do not have to wear masks continuously, but it will be convenient to wear a mask if you are going into any transport uh, full of people or in a closed place where you cannot keep distance. This is something useful. There is not a problem. I mean, a mask in your face has nothing to do with a pipe inside your mouth, which is the result of not wearing a mask. Exactly. So um, we are not asked for a big sacrifice only a small thing for our own health. Now, one thing I think I have no problem with following these um, recommendations in some places, laws, but I do find it strange that, for example, you say to someone, smile for the camera, and they say, why? Because I've got the mask on. But our eyes <laughs> are the windows to our souls. I don't care if you've got a mask on, you can still see what you're feeling and expressing. And then also yes. walking in this morning, and walking on the pavement, my mask on, plenty of space, but people tend to look down and away. This mm -hmm. is my one worry, that being cautious and wearing a mask, we shouldn't suddenly become skittish and shy away from other people. We've got to keep a one, but you can still look over at someone and smile without spitting on them. Correct. Wearing the mask has made us um, isolated from the others. If you have a mask, it means that you shouldn't breathe the same air of the other person. But it doesn't mean you cannot look to his eyes. It doesn't mean you cannot say, hello, how are you? It doesn't mean you need to ignore the other person. It is simply that you shouldn't kiss, that you shouldn't breathe the same air. But that's all. That person is still your friend, and there is no reason to build a wall in between. A mask is enough. This is the only wall we should have, a mask. 
I quite agree, and I'm glad that um, it's come up because I think some people are just confused, and the mm -hmm. fear, the anxiety is just too much. Anyway, I don't want you to go away because we're chatting with Mario Bravo. He's come down from me to talk with us because he's got a lot of interesting things to say. I have to say, I do like your perspective on things. We're going to go down to some messages from our sponsor and our Zero Hero partners who might be closed at the moment due to restrictions, but those restaurants, bars and hotels will be welcoming in the general public back again soon. Don't go away. Back in a moment. Hey, hey. Judy and John are getting along famously. They have so much in common. Which now includes both being too tipsy to drive home. Oh, John, you can't drive home like that. <laughs> Neither can I. John looks worried. But not our Judy. She simply calls Linear Director for a free taxi and a tow truck to take her and her car home. Call Linear Director on 952-1478-34 to see how they can better your life too. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? Hi guys, Ross here from Hoganstan. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And uh, we recommend everybody. Nobody drives drinking. Everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system. And we're proud to sponsor the Zero Hero program. Welcome Zero Heroes. Come and visit us. <laughs> G-Wine is happy to be Zero Hero partner. How cool is that? <laughs> G-Wine. Thank you. Okay. We are proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. Mike Moses is proud to be a Zero Hero partner. Out of bounds, Zero Hero Partners. Here we are, sticker going on. Delighted to welcome everybody and to be part of the Zero Hero campaign. Delighted. Zero Hero, welcome here. Zero Hero, welcome here. Here, I've Welcome back. We're chatting with Mario Bravo, a man with many hats. He's an economist, but he's also a representative for the PP in Mijas. And Mario, I believe right now you are like in the opposition. So you're not actually at making laws and doing things. You're just waiting to see if you get in next time when the voting comes up. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> Even though the Popular Party won the elections in 2011, 2015 and 2019, in this latest occasion, the second and the third party join together, which is something, of course, that we don't like, but perfectly legal and fair, and they are in the government, so we are now in the opposition. There is a common phrase in Spanish that says that if you have a tío en Granada, ni tienes tío ni tienes nada. So it is like if you have an uncle in Granada, it is too far. So, in fact, being in the opposition means you are out of the government, so you cannot take decisions. You can only criticize, which is positive, and make proposals, which are usually ignored by the government. And so I there's nothing know. really, actually, you can do if you're not in that majority rule. All you could do is just wait for the next time, hopefully, to get an, well, another Well, but it say. cannot be a passive wait. It has to be an active wait. Why? Because if we haven't well, we won the election, but we didn't win with enough distance to the second one, it means that we have to do it better. So we need to talk to more people to let them know that we should do better, that we know how to do it better, that we did it better when we were in the government between 19 and 15. And that is our main job in politics nowadays, until the next elections, that no matter whether it rains or shines, 
will be the fourth uh, Sunday in May 2023. Local elections cannot be moved. National so there's still three years to go, so you can basically take a bit of a rest. But I do know that from previous chats with you, that you got into politics like, what, about 14 years ago because you want to be able to do something. You're from Malaga yourself. Yes. It matters to you what happens locally. In 2000, and I started not only as economist, also a property administrator, a community manager, in February 1990. Since then, many problems I found in Mijas was that the government, and I'm not criticizing the party, I'm criticizing the idea, we are ignoring the people living in urbanizations. They were charged taxes high, and they were not rendered services. And uh, several of us, with the same profession, decided that it was enough. It was time to do something, and the only way we could do something was not complaining, was taking over the government, and we did in 2011, and we did a lot of things in the urbanizations. There is still something to be done. Don't forget we found 70 million euros debt, which was more or less one year of uh, budget, mm, less than what Spain has nowadays, which has 1.2 yearly budgets, and uh, even though that, we started to render a lot of services in the urbanizations. 20, 30, 40 years ago, urbanizations were inhabited only by foreigners. That is not the case. There are a lot of Spaniards. And I am not making difference between nationalities, but the truth is that most of the foreigners were retired people, not needing almost anything. But now you have young Spanish couples with children that need schools, garden, transport, communications and they feel ignored, they feel they are second-class citizens. And it was our duty to treat people in equal terms, now that we have a ministry of igualdad. We're defending the rights of the Spanish in Spain, how funny is that? But it is sometimes <laughs> that it gets lost in these Costa del Sol. That's right. There's yeah. such a mix between the demand for the international that obviously brings in good money and the tourists, mm -hmm. but then obviously the residents also need and expect the same. Half of the population in Mijas has been born abroad. That made us a, a, a very important place. We have a lot of uh, ideas money, traditions from abroad, and all that can be mixed and work together. We have no problem regarding the people that were not born in Mijas, like me, and decided to come here, or were not born even in Spain. The problem is not between Spaniards and foreigners. The problem is between people living in the three centers of Mijas, at the top in Las Lagunas and La Cala, and the people living in urbanizations. They have the same rights because they have the same liabilities and the, the job of someone in the government is to make that system work. If you have liabilities, you have rights. One thing goes with the other. It goes with the other, but it's nice to see that someone in the government, um, and which is nice in our area, that actually do care. One thing that surprised me was that anyone can actually put themselves up for election in Spain, in the, the sense you can be one person and make your own party, you have to then get your votes. That's right. You can take your own decisions. You only need the support of people. In Spain, people usually join an existing party because it is always easier to be part of an infrastructure. So at that time, in 2006, some of us joined the Popular Party because we thought that was the party where most of our ideas could match. You never find a party for yourself because you have to live with others that do not have 100 percent the same ideas as you but um, that is the party that more or less fitted some of us and that's the party we joined and that was how we started to change Mijas. well it's lovely to see because change is necessary it's part of nature we're sometimes reticent to make changes change is scary but there are changes and we have to face the new tomorrow. As an economist, taking into consideration the tourism we're not having, the mm -hmm. uncertainty of what's going to happen tomorrow, nobody knows, every day is a different story. What do you see as, what can we hold on to? What, what is our optimism as an economist? What can we all be looking towards? What should be our goals? Well, the first conclusion is that we have to be worried. Being worried and concerned 
means that we have to work more and to think more on finding solutions. We do not have big industries except tourism that has disappeared and will not be back as much as before. And if that happens, it will take several years. And we have to survive in the meantime. So we have to mm, make other things. If we do the same things, we will get the same results. We did many good things to bring a lot of tourism. We cannot do that anymore. So even though we will try to get as many tourists as possible, we have to think on other ideas and we have to start being more productive. So going back to our previous conversation, if we start working from home and save 30, 60 minutes daily traveling, it is not only the money, it is also that time that we have at least to think on what we are going to do in the near future. And if that is the system used by our government, we all will be happy. We are afraid that the government is always worried, no matter which party is it, worried in what they can do to remain in power. You said before that change is necessary. Yes, but you always think in changing the others, not changing yourself. Change is necessary or convenient for everybody. And perhaps it is time to think on other ideas. Tourism has made us uh, a big and important country. Spain is very proud of its history. We are not regretting anything, but possibly it is time to start thinking on something else. And we have a terrible advantage. We have very good communications and we have the sun. And the sun is a source of energy. Um, we are linked not only to Europe, but we are only 14 kilometers from Africa. So perhaps we have to use our position in the world and our position regarding the weather to mix the energy and try to do something there. That is, I think, the way to lead the future. Well, it's uh, lovely to hear some wise words. Before we finish, your thoughts on Brexit. It is here. I have had goods returned to the UK absolute chaos. I'm not sure if we're being punished for daring leave the common market and they're rubbing our face in it. This is what happens. I mean, because it's hoop after hoop and I can't, I keep on jumping and I'm not sure where to jump next. Have you noticed well, a difference with the Brits leaving, not coming back? What's your consensus on that? Well, the, the Brits living here in Spain, I guess 99% of them voted to remain. They didn't. We didn't get a vote if we'd been out of here more the next years in England. I didn't have a vote. Lots of us didn't. Well, but many of the British came here mm, and the last thing they thought was in voting in UK. They came here to have a different life and we are very happy and grateful for that. The problem with Brexit is that it is showing the positive things. They are the owners of this vaccine and they can take their own decisions. But it is also showing the dark side they are isolated. You know that they said that when there are, there are clouds in between England and Europe, Europe is isolated. That was uh, what the British said before. I'm afraid now that size matters. And the size of Europe, much bigger than England, make us stronger. I understand why British left. They didn't want to follow some rules that they didn't accept but possibly they should have remained and fought those decisions instead of leaving. But I'm not British, I cannot decide for them. They took a decision, they are fulfilling that, and we can only wish them all the best. Not only them, mainly those who are here with us, because we want them to remain. And possibly Spain could do a little bit more to clarify their situation. Uh, they are not requesting privilege, nobody is saying that, but they want to have things clear. And Spain and bureaucracy have always been together. It is possibly time we stop, uh, we start to finish with the bureaucracy. Well, I have to say that some of the most comprehensive information I got was from the Moncloa official um, presidency website. Mm -hmm. Everything was in English. It was also not only written in English, they had audio files that I could listen to everything in English. And when you think about it being a British decision to leave the common market, how much extra work it has meant 
for the Spanish police and authorities that they're not getting extra money for. It's just giving them extra headaches and work. I have to say, those who voted to leave, shame on you, because it's not good for Spain. And it certainly wasn't the decision of many of us who live here. Yes, and, but uh, let me tell stay. you something. When Europe um, advanced in 1992 and we all learned that there was a city called Maastricht, in uh, 1992, it is 28 years ago, almost 29, they said that we were going to have an unique identity document. 28 years later, we have different identity documents. Why? Why cannot we have an identity document within Europe? Why don't we have a number like the Danish, uh, starting with our birth date and then two or three figures? Why cannot we have an European driving license? Because it just costs so much to make all the but changes. How many, <laughs> hours, how many hours we spend changing driving license from England to Spain? Why cannot we have, if we are all sharing the same roads? But that's the thing now, with the separation, it is different. We're going to have to leave it there for the moment, Mario, but obviously a lot more to discuss. Fascinating, but there again, when you're chatting with an economist, I mm -hmm. mean, how can it not be so much going on? Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Really lovely to see you again, and I'm loving the look. <laughs> really. Thank you. The COVID look. And um, yes, that's it. Mario, gracias. All right. Very happy. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to be recording here at the Exhibition Centre in Marbella. Do come down and check it out or give them a call and find out what's going on. We'll be back tomorrow with more. In the meanwhile, take care of yourselves, be nice to each other and remember to like, follow and share Marbella now on Facebook and Instagram. Take care. Hasta mañana. Worth your time